Welcome to a new episode of podcast. Box Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. AI-powered image editors. I mean, they're fundamentally changing how we all create visuals. It's sparking incredible excitement, sure, but also, well, a fair bit of debate. For you, as an executive navigating this uh, rapidly evolving market, understanding this revolution, it isn't just about curiosity. It's really a strategic imperative. So today we're taking a deep dive into this whole landscape. Our mission to really unpack the latest capabilities of these cutting edge tools, specifically the model once known as Nano Banana. We'll look at how they're transforming the entire creative industry and importantly, the significant challenges they present to artists and creators. It's a huge topic, multifaceted, and we're here to uh, give you the shortcut to being truly well-informed. Exactly. Our goal today is to cut through all the noise, you know, all the hype, and really distill the most important insights from this, this complex interplay of technology and creativity. We'll definitely be highlighting the evolution and the, frankly, immense impact of what's now officially known as the Google Gemini 2.5 flash image model. You should walk away from this deep dive with a clearer understanding of not just what this tech can do, but crucially, why it matters for your strategic planning. Ready to navigate this fascinating and honestly unmissable landscape. Okay, let's unpack this then. This model we've been hearing whispers about, Nano Banana. Yeah. It's yeah. actually been officially unveiled by Google. Gemini 2.5 Flash Image. <laughs> and now we'll just call it Gemini 2.5 Flash, its official name. And this isn't just a rebrand. It sounds like a truly significant advancement in AI-powered image editing. A new chapter, maybe? Oh, absolutely. And what's really fascinating, I think, is its foundational technology. This isn't just slapping on a filter, right? <laughs> Gemini 2.5 Flash leverages a, well, a pretty sophisticated blend of deep learning models. Think of it like this. Large language models, LLMs, help it understand your text commands with remarkable nuance. It gets what you mean. Okay. Then you've got generative adversarial networks, GANs. They're like um, two AI artists constantly challenging each other. One generates the other critiques, pushing for more realism. Oh, okay. I've heard of those. Yeah. And finally, diffusion models. They're incredibly good at starting with like abstract noise and gradually refining it into these stunning high resolution visuals. This combined power trained on absolutely massive data sets of images and text. That's what allows the model to understand visual content semantically. It's almost like it gets the meaning, the context within a picture, not just the pixels. Right. Semantic understanding. And here's where it gets really interesting for me. Yeah. Because that semantic understanding, it feels like a genuine game changer for anyone in the visual space. Mm -hmm. Imagine telling an AI, not just, you know, change the color, but replace the sky with a dramatic sunset while maintaining realistic lighting and reflections in the water. That's complex. And Gemini 2.5 Flash can do precisely that. It's not just swapping pixels. It's understanding the context, the physics of light, the mood. It performs these truly complex manipulations based on often surprisingly simple text prompts. And the speed. You mentioned Flash. Exactly. Beyond that semantic power, what really sets Gemini 2.5 Flash apart and gives it that Flash designation is a specific feature enabling near instantaneous generation and manipulation. High resolution stuff too. Near instantaneous. Almost. It's not just a minor speed bump, it's a paradigm shift in creative workflow. Right. Less waiting, much more iterating, more actual creating. Oh, wow. But is this just for like tech wizards or can regular teams use it? That's the other crucial part. It's actually designed for user friendliness, the intuitive interface, the ease of use. It really democratizes access to these sophisticated tools. It makes them accessible to a much wider range of people, even those without deep design experience. For businesses, that means a lower barrier to entry for creative output across different teams. Okay, so easier to use. And does it play nice with existing tools? Because nobody wants to relearn everything. Good point. It boasts seamless integration with existing editing suites. Think Adobe yeah. Creative Suite, the standard workflows. It slots right in rather than forcing you into a whole new ecosystem that minimizes friction, speeds up adoption massively. Okay, so we've covered the fascinating tech. But for you, the executive listening, trying to forecast the next, say, three to five years, mm -hmm. what's the tangible impact on creative ops, on the bottom line? How are these tools really reshaping the business landscape? Well, the economic impact alone is profound, and the implications for your business strategy are significant to say the least we're looking at truly explosive market growth for these ai image editors the projection an astounding usd 39.71 billion by 2034 39 billion wow exactly and what that staggering figure really signals isn't just you know another market trend it's a fundamental recalibration of where value is being created in the visual economy you have to ask yourself 
If your competitors are leveraging tools that let them produce high quality visuals at a fraction of your current cost and time, what does that do to your market position? Hmm, good question. The insight here is that this isn't just about efficiency. It's becoming a strategic imperative for market leadership. It demands immediate attention to your visual content pipeline. USD, 39.71 billion. It definitely sounds like businesses are realizing these tools offer much more than just, you know, flashy new effects. They absolutely are. Because these AI tools enhance productivity and offer significant cost savings that directly hit your bottom line. They automate those time-consuming, often tedious tasks. Image enhancement, retouching, background removal. It drastically reduces manual effort and the associated costs, especially for large enterprises with huge visual libraries. Right. And consider this statistic. It's quite striking. 83% of visual creatives are already integrating AI into their processes. 83% already. Already. This isn't some future trend you can wait on. It's happening right now. And if your teams aren't among them, you're likely falling behind in output and cost efficiency. Hmm. Maybe both. 83% adoption. That's incredibly rapid. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine that kind of efficiency gain naturally leads to, well, significant scalability benefits for businesses too, wouldn't it? Precisely. AI allows businesses to manage much larger volumes of visual content, often with their existing resources. It fosters output growth without needing proportionate increases in spending or headcount. Imagine, say, ramping up personalized marketing campaigns or expanding your e-commerce product lines, but without linearly scaling your design team. That's a game changer for growth. Yeah, absolutely. And because these tools are becoming so accessible, relatively speaking, they're lowering the barrier to entry for high quality creative work. This fosters entrepreneurial opportunities, especially in emerging markets. It really democratizes access to sophisticated creative power, opening up new talent pools, new business models. So connecting this to the bigger picture, it sounds like completely new creative horizons are opening up everywhere. Can you maybe paint a clearer picture? Give us some concrete examples of what this looks like in practice. Sure, absolutely. In marketing and advertising, for instance, the ability to rapidly create personalized, targeted visual content for campaigns, it's revolutionary. Instead of one single ad creative, you can generate perhaps thousands of micro variations, optimize for different demographics, different platforms, leading to much better engagement rates. Hmm, tailored content at scale. Exactly, or look at e-commerce and retail. AI automates image enhancement, think perfect lighting, clean white backgrounds, all done in seconds, and it can generate diverse product shots from just a single image. Imagine showing a new sofa in 20 different room settings without ever needing a physical photography studio. That saves immense time and resources, I bet. Speed to market, customer experience. Directly impacts both. And another fascinating area, one with a really positive social impact, is its use in cultural heritage and preservation. AI is helping digitize and restore historical artifacts, artworks, things that might otherwise be lost to time. It can intelligently fill in missing parts of damaged paintings or clean up centuries-old photos. That's incredible. It enhances accessibility, ensures longevity for future generations. It's a powerful tool for preserving our past and making it available globally. Okay, so we've painted a pretty compelling picture of opportunity and growth. Huge potential. But, as with any disruptive technology, that bright light inevitably casts some significant shadows. It's crucial for executives, for you listening, to understand the other side of the coin, the complex challenges these tools present, particularly for individual artists and for the creative industry as a whole. Let's, uh, let's delve into those concerns now. Yes, and this raises that important question. What are those challenges for businesses specifically to navigate? One of the most significant and certainly valid concerns impacting workforce planning is job displacement. We are likely to see automation impact certain roles, especially perhaps entry-level ones, as some repetitive tasks become automated. Right, the automation fear. It's a real concern. However, it's crucial for leaders, I think, to frame this more as a potential shift in job roles rather than outright elimination across the board. New opportunities are emerging. Things like AI-assisted design, AI content curation, roles where human creativity guides and refines the AI output. It's more a redefinition of skills and roles requiring a proactive approach to reskilling your workforce. So it's not simply AI replaces human, but more like AI changes what humans do. A shift in needed skill sets, that makes sense for long-term planning. Mm -hmm. What about the um, the legal and societal implications? Ownership, authenticity? Uh, that sounds tricky. The legal and societal landscape is indeed substantial, and it presents significant risk factors for businesses. 
Firstly, copyright and intellectual property. That's a huge legal challenge. Training AI models on these vast data sets of existing images, it often raises complex questions of fair use, consent, compensation. Did the original artists agree to this? Furthermore, the ownership of AI-generated content itself, who actually owns a piece created by an AI that was prompted by a human, the prompter, the AI developer, the owner of the training data, it's highly debated. The legal landscape is still very much evolving, creating significant complexities for artists and businesses trying to navigate these waters and, frankly, avoid potential litigation. That sounds like a real minefield for legal teams. Yeah. And think about today's world, the age of misinformation. What risks do these tools pose to trust and authenticity? That's precisely the next major concern. Misinformation and deepfakes. The uh, frightening ease with which these tools can generate realistic but entirely fake images poses serious risks to truth and trust. From manipulated news images to, say, fabricated advertising or political propaganda, these capabilities can quickly erode public confidence in visual evidence. It could lead to a world where, quite literally, seeing is no longer believing. That's a scary thought. For businesses, this means a heightened risk of reputational damage if their own content is somehow misused or if their brand gets associated, even accidentally, with inauthentic visuals. And what about biases? Biases baked into the AI's learning process. That feels like a more subtle but potentially very damaging risk. Absolutely. Algorithmic bias is another critical concern for any executive focused on brand equity on fair representation. If the training data sets contain biases, and let's be honest, many historical data sets inherently do, reflecting past societal inequalities, the AI can inadvertently perpetuate these biases in its outputs. So it learns our old problems. Essentially, yes. This could lead to inaccurate or unfair visuals, maybe underrepresenting certain demographics or creating stereotypical imagery. This could potentially exacerbate societal inequalities and definitely damage your brand's reputation for inclusivity. Okay, so ethical minefields abound. But beyond those, are there still purely technical limitations we should be aware of? Oh, yeah. It's important to remember these tools aren't magic wands. Not yet, anyway. Mm -hmm. Even with all their impressive capabilities, they can sometimes produce what uh, we sometimes affectionately call AI weirdness. AI weirdness. Like, like inconsistent quality, especially in very high-resolution outputs. You might get a generated hand with six fingers or a face that looks subtly uncanny, just off. Ah, the uncanny valley. Exactly. And for highly specialized creative tasks, that granular, pixel-perfect control over subtle stylistic elements that a skilled human designer provides, that's often still unmatched by AI. So for that hyper-curated, really brand-defining visual, human oversight and refinement remain absolutely crucial. And even if the tech works perfectly, just getting these tools effectively integrated into an organization, that isn't always smooth sailing either, right? There are practical challenges beyond the tech itself. No, definitely not smooth sailing sometimes. There are definite implementation hurdles for any executive looking at deployment. Businesses need to consider the practical challenges. How do you integrate these tools seamlessly into existing workflows? That often includes the necessity for retraining existing staff to leverage these new capabilities effectively. And you have to manage potential resistance to change from within the workforce. People might be worried or just comfortable with old ways. A lack of proper change management or insufficient training can quickly turn a potentially powerful tool into just an expensive, underutilized asset sitting on the shelf. Right. So we've explored the immense opportunities, the growth, the potential, and also the significant challenges, the risks, the hurdles. What does this all mean for you, our listener, contemplating this truly transformative era? How do we move forward responsibly, balancing all these incredible opportunities with the real and present challenges? Yeah, connecting this to the bigger picture for business leaders, I think a balanced and strategic approach is absolutely key. It has to be. For you as a business leader, strategic adoption means more than just buying the latest software. It really should involve designing a phased rollout. Maybe start with pilot programs in, say, low-risk, high-return areas like internal communications, and rigorously prioritize tools that integrate seamlessly with your existing creative and marketing workflows. Disruption should be minimized where possible, not embraced just for its own sake. Okay, so phase rollout, seamless integration. What else? Crucially, it means investing in your talent. Comprehensive employee training and upskilling initiatives are vital. You need to equip your workforce with the competencies required for this new AI-powered creative economy. It's about empowering your people to become AI whisperers or AI sculptors, you know, people who can guide the AI effectively, not just worrying about being replaced by it. That sounds like a really proactive approach to a shifting landscape. 
turning to potential threats into new capabilities for the team. It is. And beyond the internal focus, establishing clear ethical guidelines for AI usage within your organization is paramount, absolutely critical. Focusing on transparency, fairness, accountability, and all creative outputs. Mm. This isn't just about ticking compliance boxes. It's about safeguarding your brand's reputation, building trust with your audience, your customers. This proactive approach builds confidence and ensures responsible innovation. Makes sense. Ultimately, though, the ultimate success, I believe, hinges on a human-centric design philosophy. AI should augment, not replace, human creativity. That has to be the goal. Mm. Human designers, human creatives, they remain crucial for the conceptualization, the strategic direction, injecting the emotional resonance, the stuff that AI, for all its power, simply cannot replicate. It's about collaboration, with humanity firmly at the helm, directing the AI's incredible capabilities towards our goals. A powerful reminder of the human element. Which brings us to our final thought for you to consider. With AI-powered image editors like Gemini 2.5 flash image making, near-instant high-resolution visual creation and manipulation of reality, if machines can execute our wildest visual concept almost instantly, what new frontiers will human creativity push into that are uniquely our own? And what will true artistic genius look like in a world where the technical barriers to, to creation are rapidly diminishing? Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.